today it is just Rachel and I, I being Liza. Um, <laughs> forgot that not all of you can. Welcome to episode three of Monkey Business Podcast. Uh, today, we have what's going to be the first of many. For those of you that can't see, I recommend pausing this and actually watching the YouTube video instead, <laughs> because this episode is our first infrared interview. So in our office, we have an infrared sauna. Um, if anyone has not been in an infrared sauna, you should definitely check it out. It's incredible for detoxification and many other things that we can save for a later date. Rachel can just do a whole episode on infrared saunas. Yeah. But anyways, today it's just Rachel and I. I'm going to do our first infrared interview with Rachel. The idea of these being that we're just going to get everything out, which is kind of what this sauna does, is just get all of the toxins, all of the little things that have been building up inside you out so that you can go about your life. So we're going to use this to kind of talk about some of the really hard moments, the really important moments, pressing moments in people's lives that have gotten them to where they are today or that they're still struggling with, they're on a journey, etc. So today we're going to talk a little bit about um, Rachel's health journey. For anyone that follows us, or I guess specifically follows Rachel more so, they have seen that currently she's on an anti-candida cleanse. Um, and she has struggled throughout many, many years, uh, with celiac disease. If you read our founding story, you know that gut issues, gut disease, um, food allergies, I'll let you get into it. But right. anyways, let's start this. We're setting our timer for 20 minutes and here we go. Here we go. The sweat <laughs> and the heat is on literally. <laughs> Definitely. It's sick. 136 degrees Fahrenheit and it'll go up to 158 probably by the time we're done. And um, hopefully by then I will have flushed out all the really important pivotal health points for everyone. Hopefully, but it's a big story. So anyways, let's start where, let's start at day one. Let's start back when you were a kid and the way that you grew up. Like how, how did you discover where all of your health issues like where did the journey begin well as a kid I frankly had no clue that I had all of these gut issues that I had celiac and really I was completely unaware of the fact that every single day I was doing things to actually harm my system because I didn't know that what I was putting into my body was actually causing a ton of inflammation because I was allergic to it and that it was actually ruining my gut barrier um, everything from gluten to dairy also antibiotics like living in Hong Kong having like really really shitty air quality I was on antibiotics probably once a year for upper respiratory tract infection and one of the biggest side effects of antibiotics is that it wipes out all of the good and the bad bacteria in your gut and it can actually cause leaky gut as well um, so no clue that all this was happening as a kid um, my parents are not very athletic so they weren't really thinking about things from the angle of like food as fuel and really looking at like how the body performs and looking at food as like that base denominator for, for success. Um, so it was really when I was 15 and I made the Hong Kong national field hockey team that I started really paying attention to food, the way my body felt and performance. And by the time I was, I think it was like 16, 17, I was super freaked out because I was playing for the national team, I was captain of my varsity team, and I was playing for a club team. I was super busy, but eating well, sleeping well, and I was exhausted. Like I, every morning felt like I was, like I had been hit by a truck, like couldn't get out of bed. And so I insisted on getting a full physical, and my parents were like, you're insane, but okay, like we support you, go, go do it, like you're super healthy, but fine. And my doctors were like, yeah, you're in great shape. Like, all your vitals are incredible. All your performance metrics, everything's fine. Um, maybe you should sleep more. And I was like, all right, I'm going to sleep more. But little did I know, 
I actually had all these issues that I would then uncover in college and then throughout life until now. Got it. So, on the surface, seemingly totally healthy kid. Yeah. Everything comes up normal. So then, this is a two-part question. One, when did you decide to kind of go back to that doctor, revisit, like, hey, I'm not feeling right. I'm not feeling the way that I think I should be feeling based off my lifestyle. And then, um, two, like, what did that look like? Right. Like, what what did you do first? Where did you start? Yeah. Um, it was really when I moved to Boston University to go to school, and I ended up walking onto the rowing team there, and I was noticing that I was not reacting to the training um, the way that my teammates were in the sense of body composition and also energy levels. I was going to practice, you know, getting up at 5 a.m., going to practice, like, rowing on the Charles, and then eating some sort of sandwich or, like, a chocolate milk, something for, like, quick recovery, and then running to my first 8 a.m. class, because when you're a freshman, 8 a.m.s are... Especially yeah. at BU. You get all the 8 a.m.s. Yeah, like, there's no way Constant. around the 8 a.m.s. Yeah. yeah, Liza went to BU, too, so she knows those 8 a.m.s are brutal. Um, and then I would proceed to pass out in my 8 a.m.s to the point where I almost didn't make it into business school because I slept through all the key lectures. Um, but my rowing coach was incredibly helpful and she said, well, have you done a food allergy panel? Do you have celiac? Um, well, she didn't say, do you have celiac? She said, are you gluten intolerant or lactose intolerant? Like, do you have any issues because you're complaining about bloating, um, stomach aches and if your body is is not responding and is it's like super low energy that sounds right up right about some kind of food issue and um she was right she had it like hit the nail on the head um so i did a blood test and it turns out i did have celiac i was lactose intolerant um so it was right then and there that i just went cold turkey just straight up no gluten yeah i just said if i know this is harming me i just cannot consciously put it in my body and that was it. R.I.P. Gluten. That's fair. Well, and at the time, there was, like, no gluten alternatives. Yeah, I mean, there were some, but it was not like today. Yeah, like, no. I remember being around you, and that was... And, I mean, I felt it from, like, the lactose intolerant dairy yeah. allergy thing. But, yeah, like, back then was bad. Yeah, you couldn't go into a restaurant and be like, Does your, do you have gluten-free soy sauce, and um, could you please cook without... Oh, my God. Like, the miso or the breadcrumbs. Like, everyone looked at you like you were just, like, this big trouble child. Yeah, and also, like, just so everyone knows way back, this is not that far. No, this is, like, <laughs> 2011. <laughs> it, yeah, not even, no, because I had our, I graduated oh, from high school in 2012. So yeah. it was, it was, like, 2013, 2014. Because I got diagnosed with dairy stuff in 2000, summer 2012. And then... No, this was fall of 2012. It was your first year in college. Was it the fall? That yeah. All the, oh, weird. Okay. For me. No, I know, but I'm, I, for some reason, I thought that we at least made it through, like, a year of BU without sucking too much in terms of no food. <laughs> 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 but okay, yeah, that's right. Interesting. Okay, so, anyways, so you go, you get the food allergy. You go, um, food allergy panel. You go cold turkey. Yeah. How do you feel? How does that change your life? I mean, I instantly lost 15 pounds and it was just water weight and bloating because my system wasn't under chronic inflammation. And now thinking back in retrospect, like my system was working in overdrive basically every day since childhood because I was eating things that weren't resonating with my body and then pushing it to the extreme as an athlete and not getting proper recovery because as I was sleeping, my body was probably so focused on detoxifying versus actually growing and resting makes sense yeah okay so you feel better I feel better but clearly because you know we all have you know knowledge that yeah. the story didn't end there what what changed what what made you think like okay I feel better I've lost this weight my like things are improved for right. sure but it's not I still don't think it's right yeah it was so I stopped rowing at the end of my sophomore year and really started doing my own training regimen and following my own macro plans, experimenting with all different diets because I couldn't put my finger on it, like the cause and effect, but I was getting like random gut pains, like 
bloating, feeling gassy, but it wasn't like, okay, if I eat chicken, then X happens. If I eat a Twizzler, then X happens. It was just, I couldn't figure out the pattern. I was so frustrated. And um, as I started eliminating things, I started to feel cleaner and like way more energy, way more like uh, better results performance wise. And that got me really hooked on this like performance and fuel food experiment, which got me to then toy around with all these different healthy desserts because I, I have a sweet tooth, I like to indulge and normal human. Yeah, normal human case in point not um, iron man yet no <laughs> looking for that <laughs> fun fact rachel's goal is to become iron man in terms of i want tony stark's heart but for my stomach so that i don't have problems anymore yes but also being an iron man would be pretty cool yeah i sort of feel like you want the whole thing yeah, like, yeah first would be stomach and then like i need jarvis like oh cool well yeah we'll call him <laughs> <laughs> we all need jarvis <laughs> um but anyways like trying to then find a fuel that didn't give me a stomach ache that helped me with performance that was also indulgent was really really tough and but it led me to what snow monkey is today the original batches of snow monkey were created out of that need for feeling good having function and also just needing indulgence um yeah well you solved a lot of needs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone there i remember at the time there was like rice milk ice cream was like the only like healthy and there was that tofu dessert. one too oh yeah i never even like bothered trying yes. that i was like this yeah. isn't gonna work for me but <laughs> <laughs> but not to throw anyone under the bus but um okay so you find snow monkey start doing things like that but i mean still like something was wrong and something yeah. needed to be fixed that you know food will heal it to an extent anyone that's gone through this understands that you can start doing that trial and error yeah. with food and pulling things in and pulling things out. But there really is this, like, once you think you've got it all figured out, you get really sick again. And you're like, but I did everything right. Yeah. So where did you go yeah, from it's, those moments? I mean, you explained it probably. It's such a frustrating process. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what happened was once I had created this snow monkey, all of a sudden, like, we got in, we got like funding, um, from the university, all my focus went on there. I graduated and I got so passionate and involved in snow monkey that I actually started to ignore my physical needs. Like my training regimen kind of went to shits and, um, I wasn't really as mindful about my food because I was just working like nonstop to try and get proof of concept for snow monkey so that by the end of the summer, I could say, I'm not taking corporate job. I am going to reinvent ice cream for America. And um, in that process, I really let myself burn out. And I think stress is probably the number one factors that has led to my gut getting to its absolute worst. And also now when I do have periods where my gut is, is not doing well, it's generally stress related. And um, right after we had realized like we were going to bring Snow Monkey to market, we moved to LA and I was just working around the clock and um, I got to the point where I couldn't eat anything. I was feeling nauseous all the time. So I started going around to all the top gastroenterologists um, at all the main hospitals, you know, the logical kind of traditional route. And all of them were like, oh, okay, well, it sounds like you have IBS, irritable bowel, irritable bowel syndrome, which honestly is just such a cop-out excuse, as you know. It's not even a proper diagnosis. All it means is that you have pain in your belly you could be gassy, you could have diarrhea, you could have constipation, but essentially it can't be cured. It could just be maybe alleviated somehow. And I was so pissed off that they all throw these... They the FODMAP diet at yeah. you. Just be a... Yeah, you try all these random diets, and then they also want to give you an antibiotics, which is awful for the gut, and they'll tell you, like, this antibiotic may or may not work. Yeah, because they always insist you have a parasite first. Yeah. They're like, you probably have a parasite. We didn't find a parasite inside of your gut, but you probably have a parasite anyway. The so. gut is so misunderstood. Here's erythromycin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Good bro. plan, bro. <laughs> but it's so bad, and I just, like, couldn't sit there, and I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Like, this is not the answer. We cannot just throw all of these gut issues into some, like, blanket diagnosis. 
Um, and I started going around to holistic healers, um, asking trainers, like getting all sorts of different specialist opinions on what was going on. Ended up getting a blood test, a stool test, and a saliva test, and figured out that I had all of these key symptoms, which were I had super high cortisol, um, very high inflammation. My liver was overworking because it was trying to clean out all the toxins. Um, I had positive autoimmune markers and um, I was nutrient deficient because my body wasn't properly absorbing anything. And I was feeling like depression and anxiety, but I wasn't depressed. Mm -hmm. And it was really just that chemical imbalance because there actually are more pathways from the gut to the brain than the brain to the gut. And so the gut can really, that's why it contributes to like brain fog mm -hmm. and stress. Um, and so I realized I had leaky gut and so I had to go through a whole protocol for trying to fix leaky gut, which I did by trying to lower my stress, which I know is, is a hard actionable because you can't just tell someone like, Hey, stress less, chill out. Um, but that took a lot of, I think, trying to meditate, um, trying to read a lot of like, ugh, not like self-help, but like listening to like a lot of good biohacking podcasts, um, detoxifying the body, doing an elimination diet, um, and then taking a lot of supplements. So like CBD helped a lot, curcumin, L-glutamine. Yeah. I mean, I have a crazy supplement regimen if anyone wants to get into details about it. Yeah. I think like a huge thing to note here is that like, this is such a complex yeah. situation for anyone. And so many people are going through it. It's totally different for every single person because obviously the body is different. It's the same way with like a diet and a workout routine. It's right. not going to yeah. hit me the same way it hits you. So, and I think I, I want to quickly touch on though, because I think a huge thing that people don't talk about is the mental health aspect yeah. of this disease or this, these syndromes that people throw onto you because stress is a huge trigger. It makes no sense that like you get stressed and then all of a sudden you feel nauseous and it's yeah. like, but I remember it makes sense now because I used to like be stuck in the bathroom before my spelling tests in like second grade or my math tests. I was so yeah. nervous that I was going to do poorly on them, but it makes sense now that I'm older. So like talk a little bit about just like that portion of this and how it really did impact your work and not impact your work, but you know, just impacted you living your life and doing the things yeah. that make you really happy, like your work. And then how you had to find those other pieces of, right. of, of your life to kind of bring in and help supplement yeah. oh you're right it, the mental part of it is definitely the hardest because also it's tough enough feeling sick and super top doctors basically telling you um we kind of don't know what it is it could be this you're gonna have it for the rest of your life like have fun mm -hmm. um and it, it's a very like isolating journey especially when you don't have like a pattern to be like all right if i avoid these five things i'll be good and so it takes that mental toughness, first of all. And then um, the stress portion, really like meditating was the biggest thing in terms of just calming the nervous system. Mm -hmm. Because chronic stress causes that inflammation as well. And then that's super tough on the gut. And it not getting the right sleep, I mm -hmm. think that affects your your mental state as well but also like when you are sleeping that is exactly the time when the body's detoxifying and recovering so if you're wound up or you're stressed out you're going to bed you're not sleeping well the body can't detoxify you wake up not feeling refreshed or rejuvenated you're still not processing toxins the body's in overdrive the whole time which then mm -hmm. shoots up the cortisol and then your stress levels are even higher when the whole thing was you're trying to keep your stress levels low and you're stressing about not stressing. It's an absolute vicious cycle. Yeah. Um, I don't have it down to a science, but I think alleviating symptoms with being on a super strict diet, having, being really strict about detaching from work because I've had a problem with that. I mean, I love what we do so much that it's so easy for me to literally look up and be like, Oh, it's 1130 PM and I'm still in the office and I haven't eaten dinner. Mm -hmm. So just trying to make sure, like, I look after these basic needs. I feel like I'm in, like, elementary school again, but, like, did I eat my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner? Did I have a little bit of, like, chill time before going to bed? Did I put my phone down before going to bed? Those things all add up. 
Like blue light blocking glasses help a lot too with the stress and the sleep. Definitely. And I think, um, I think too, so like you obviously have this like athlete mentality where like you're very regimented. If someone says do something, you probably can do it pretty quickly. Just like the celiac, like all of a sudden one day like, cool, I can't eat gluten. See ya. Won't eat it again. I think that's a very unique way to be able to live life. Not a lot of people can do it. So if you were to give advice to someone that just needs a little bit of coaching in terms of like, how do you think personally? Because also disclaimer, this is not a like, do this and you'll be better. This is just like our thoughts and our opinions, Rachel's journey. But if you were to give someone advice of like, hey, like I'm struggling with just detaching or I'm struggling with this one portion of it, what would be your advice for them? Yeah, no, that's a really good question because everyone's case is different. Um, I would say it's figuring out why you are trying to make a change. Because for me, for example, like I just knew that I wanted to be at optimal health for my own athletic performance, for my cognitive performance, and because I know that I have so much life ahead of me that I don't want to keep living it in the struggle with my gut. So my why is so strong. So whatever it takes, I'm pretty much there. Um, And I've gone to all sorts of extremes. And so I think finding, firstly, doing your own research and finding specialists and finding people that understand and actually have some sort of diagnosis and a plan that can be evaluated, I think is really helpful because a lot of the times with the gut, you're like, oh, today I feel better. I didn't shit my pants. Like, that's not a helpful metric, right? <laughs> yeah. But if you have a blood test and then you do another blood test two months later and you see that the liver marker is actually down or the autoimmune marker is changed, then that's, like, helpful for you to keep going. It is a long, long mm-hmm. ways to go. Like, I'm even now still struggling because I thought I fixed leaky gut and then I realized that I had candida in the most recent stool test I took. So I had to implement a whole lot of different measures but I think knowing what the root cause is and then having I guess like a health mentor if it's not a doctor is really helpful and then just being really clear to the why because some people have said to me like yeah I feel like crap when I eat ice cream or when I eat a sandwich or pastries but YOLO because I love it so much so if they don't want to change then the why is not there right of course it's going to be a struggle if it's not what you value yeah, no, I think that definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah. We're at our 20 minutes, so I'm going to stop you there. But I know, like, we literally scratched the tip of the iceberg with that. So if anyone has more questions, Rachel's super active on Instagram, so follow her, our Geica. Um, we'll put that in the comments and everything so yeah. that people can just go straight to you. Um, yeah, I don't have all the answers too. So if anyone has suggestions, please exactly. tell me because think, it's a work in progress. I think community that's is the really one thing point. that helps the most with this. Totally a good point is just talking about it and talking yeah. about, cause even Rachel and I have had conversations before and it's like, oh, well that I'm different. It's different, but like maybe yeah. just talking like the banter too, just like going back and forth and also finding someone to laugh about it with, I think really helps <laughs> because like there are a lot of really funny, like it's not funny, but also yeah. like it's in a childish way it's kind of funny yeah. things the to fact this. that we can be like ha ha didn't shit my pants yeah like when yeah and like <laughs> that's it's it's important to be able to find the humor in this in yeah. such a stressful situation that's not fun so we'll be that person for you if you want to reach out reach out to rachel and tell her reach out to us um on email comment in any of these um any of these places yeah videos. wherever you're like, watching find listening. Word, like any of the places that you might be seeing this comment we'll get back to you we promise um yeah or if you have suggestions on how to deal with it or if you disagreed with something we said tell us like we'd love to share it yeah all right well that was our first infrared interview we are at almost 150 degrees it is it is hot we're sweating all right, well, before my phone falls off the wall, we taped my phone to the wall for Yeah, this. someone needs to get footage of this phone. Yeah, it's like... It's like really it's ghetto insane. Spider-Man did a web. There's Mel. Mel. We have Mel outside. Mel who... Us, like crazy people. Won't show her face yet. Yeah. yeah.
We'll see. No, we saw Mel in the last episode. Oh, we saw Mel. Oh, you Everyone all saw Mel. Mel. Okay, so just... It's hard to remember what has happened. And what happened. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anyway, so <laughs> Monkey Business, episode three. That's a wrap. Oh. Everyone, enjoy your day, night, evening, whatever it is. You must be Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. If you like what you heard, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram at EatSwimmonkey. Monkey Business is brought to you by the Swim Monkey Kingdom and produced by Audible Logos. Our theme song is brought to you by Alex English.